welcome to my second episode of Let's Talk Flavor with Ava. Hello everyone, I'm Ava and I am Whiskey with Flavor. This is a baking show where we learn together and have so much fun. Each episode will feature new special guests, they'll teach us the techniques and we'll learn it together. Make sure you watch it again and again, and we'll tell you what supplies and what tools you're gonna need. Today's guest is Gina Gutierrez, owner of Cakes by Gina's in Houston, Texas. You should see Gina's cakes, they're incredible. But first, I'm gonna ask you some questions, Gina. When did you know you wanted to be a baker? It actually was like, 14 years old when I started doing um, baking. Um, I actually went to school for something else, architecture, and then after I got my degree and I didn't like it, I did my own wedding cake and that's how I started my business. I did um, cakes for friends and families and then I decided one day to open up the bakery. But I was very young, just like you. How and when did you get started? And why do you do what you do? So I love baking. Um, I love making sweets. I like making recipes. Um, uh, I like to be creative with food. Um, and I like the sweet part. I don't like the savory part. And so I started making friends, uh, cakes for friends and families, little birthday cakes. And one day somebody told me to do their wedding cake and I did their wedding cake. And uh, here we are 15 years later. What type of cakes are your favorite to make? So we, I like to, I since I study architecture, I like to make the hard ones. The ones that, let's say in here in Texas, rooms cakes are very important. So they usually like to have like a stadium or some kind of figure standing up. And so those are the ones that I like to do because they're challenging. Um, I end up going to Home Depot to the plumbing department, which is really funny because they go in and um, they want to help me and I, and they asked me, are you doing a bathroom? Are you doing a renovation? I said, no, I'm making a cake. And usually I have to go do, get pipes and flanges and, and boards. So I like to do the 3D cakes and, and the hard cakes um, because they challenge me and they, um, people get impressed and then they still taste good because it's fresh cake and um, it makes people happy. What types of techniques do you do the most? So right now, you know, when you're making cakes and now with Pinterest and social media, you can't, we kind of like go to different things. Right now, what's in is the marbling. And marbling is a technique where you take fondant and you put different colors together and you kind of knead it and every cake is different. Um, we also like to do a lot of airbrushing. Um, I just heard that you also got your airbrush machine and you get to play a lot with that. You get to be an artist on a cake. Um, so airbrushing and the marbling techniques are what's in right now and we like to do them all the time. I'll teach you how to do some of that technique. It's really beautiful. The thing about marbling cakes is that not one is the same. So it's, it's funny because I tell people they come in with a picture and they say, I want this exact cake. I was like, well, it's marbling can have it all the same so every marble that you do you'll figure it out as when I teach you how to do it that every one that you do is totally different because of the way the fondant moves when you're rolling it. Do you make your own fondant icing or buy it? If you buy it what's your favorite brand? So when I started I used to make my own fondant now we do we do a lot of cakes a week so now we buy um, the brand that I love is that nice. Um, the reason why I like it is because it's great for Texas weather. It doesn't melt. It works great with humidity. The flavor is very good. Um, they have a lot of colors um, and they keep up with the trends. Like now they have like a navy blue, which is beautiful and burgundy. And, um, and they come in different sizes. Um, so we do a lot of, we use a lot of the satin, satin fondant is the one I like. This is our favorite. <laughs> this one, the satin ice bucket. Okay, 
have to help putting this back down. Okay. Yeah, I know that bucket. It's good for exercise. <laughs> What's your most popular cake flavor and icing? So all of our cakes come with a vanilla icing and I am really excited to say that even after 15 years, we still make our own icing here daily and I flavor it with vanilla. Um, our most popular cake flavor is a white cake with a, a bridal white cake with a cream cheese filling and strawberry mint in the middle. And um, it's a lot of the brides like it, um, the couples get it. Just for a basic cake, the cream cheese filling um, is so good. It makes, it, it kind of gives you like two things that in one, like it's a cheesecake flavor, but then it's in a cake. My two favorite types of cake are the red velvet cake and the vanilla cake. My favorite type of icing is the cream cheese flavor because it goes with everything and it tastes so good. I saw a video of one of your wedding cakes when you did a cake drop from the ceiling. Were you nervous it would break? Yes, I was actually very nervous. Um, one of the things that I don't do here is I don't go on deliveries and I had to be there at that time when this cake was falling off the ceiling and making sure that it was okay. Uh, we were lucky enough to work with a decorator, um, Royal Luxury, and they were the one that did, it was a combined, when you do stuff like that, you have to work with other people um, because the mechanics of the cake coming down, the, in, the motor, um, the things that were going inside the cake had to be not only good, but they also have to be um, certified that it can go within inside the, the cake for uh, food consumption. And so, yeah, I was very nervous, um, but everybody loved it because nobody was suspecting it. Um, and the bride and the groom really fell in love with it. So we had a lot of fun that weekend. After it fell, after it dropped down, I was very nervous the whole day. I'd be nervous. Has your company won any awards? Yes, we have a lot of awards. Um, we do a lot with the, we get a lot of awards with the Knot, which is a bridal, very important bridal magazine. Uh, we do a lot with the Wedding Wire um, and here in the Houston, uh, with weddings in Houston. Um, a lot of our awards are because of the wedding cakes and the groom's cake that we do and the customer service that we do. Our words are really good because it kind of tells you that you're doing a good job. Congratulations! I hope to win some awards too someday. What advice do you have for me and some kids who want to start baking and decorating? Go for it. Go for it. Um, start with very little. Start with like um, a little recipe. Have somebody help you um, master that recipe and then start playing with it. Eat a lot of cake in icing. It's so good. Even after all this time, I love eating fresh cake and icing. Um, just play. There's a lot uh, online on Pinterest. Um, do the stuff that you like, because sometimes when you get as big as I am, you sometimes have to do stuff that you don't like. Um, but play, play with um, a lot of ideas. Um, stay with the trends, like learn techniques like right now learn the marbling technique learn how to play with the rice crispy um the molding chocolate making flowers so there's a lot that you can do and just have fun with it just have fun with it um and enjoy what you do i love i mean a lot of people tell us that you, we can tell that we make our cakes we love because we do we have fun here every day every day is different because every week we have different cakes so that's the good thing about the cakes. You make, whenever you're making a cake, you're not making, even if they tell you, I want this same cake, the next time you make a cake, it'll probably be a little bit different. So Gina, what do you have to show us today? So I'm gonna teach you, you send me a picture of one of your uh, favorite cakes that you like from us. So I'm gonna teach you how to do a marbling technique. So today we, we're going to teach Ava how to do a fondant technique that is done with, um, it's called marbling, and it's a really popular um, technique right now uh, on Pinterest and on many wedding cakes and birthday cakes. The fondant, it's a um, covering that we use 
uh, that you put on top of your cake after you have done what we call a crumb coating, which is a thin layer of icing on it. And you put your cake in the refrigerator while you work your fondant. The thing about fondant, I it's like a clay, uh, it's like a dough, uh, a Play-Doh, and you can play and man uh, manage it. The good thing about it is you can pretty much do whatever you like to do with it. The important thing about fondant, it does dry, so when you see like it has that crackling look, it's because it's dry and you have to knead it out. And the best thing to do is just do finger and I move back and forth doing it until I find it that is flexible for it to work. When you're not working with it, the best thing to do is just wrap it. Put it in, in a ball. Usually I put it all together, put it in a ball, and then do this surround wrap and wrap it really tight so that air doesn't go on it. And then maybe you can put it back in the bucket and put a lid on it so that it doesn't dry. When you do the marbling technique, there's, there's an important color on it, and then you have a couple of different colors. The main color here is white and gray, um, and then there's a different, different type of um, blues on it. And then the goal is done um, with hand painting that you do the detail at the end. But right here I have, I, I decided to do three shades of blue. The main color is going to be the white. So this is the one that we're going to use most and, and it's going to be done. So what I do is I do a snake and then I figure out what colors are going to be the most important. So then this blue, I like this blue. Blue is very popular right now. It's one of the wedding colors. And I just put it right next to it. You know, I don't even have to use any water or anything. And then I go with the... If you notice, they're not equal parts, and I'm even gonna take even less of this. This is a lighter shade. Um, and then you just knead it. Make sure that, it's, that you don't have this crackling thing um, because then it'll show on the cake. Um, so sometimes when fondant is dry, it's too dry, I put a little bit of shortening and then I just mix it in. Um, and that way you don't have that crackling look. And then I just do that. Now we have three, okay? And you can put it whichever way you want. And then we have this one, which is a lighter shade. If you want it to be a little bit lighter, you can actually add more white. So if you start with a darker color and you wanna do lighter color, then you can just add it. So I have my, my, my thing here. And all I do is I just start rolling it together and start mixing. The thing about marbling is you don't know what you're gonna get until you stop. And depending on if I, I usually do go like this to see how far am I in it. Um, you don't wanna mix it too much because then you don't get that look of marbling. All the all the things starts coming together. So we use a little bit, over here at the bakery, when you go and do things like I do, a lot of it, you have a machine called a sheeter, and it's uh, life-saving because all, all I do is I put this piece in the machine, and what it does is makes it thing without me having to uh, do this. But for video purposes, um, I am going to do what most bakers at home have to do, which is use the rolling pin. And I'm using a small rolling pin. And I usually put a little bit of powder sugar. Um, I see, um, you know, if I want it more white, if I don't like what I'm getting, then what I do is I roll it back up and put some more white on it. Uh, but then I start figuring out what size I like. So, because I did a more of a rounded technique, I get this type of marbling. But, let me show you really quick how if you want more white and just a little bit of blue,
let's say you just want more white on it and you twist it this way then when you roll it I always forget about the powder sugar but you have to keep it um, and you keep moving the fondant so that it doesn't stick because then after you get a pretty piece and then it's stuck to the table then you don't want then you have to start all over again but do you see how this was more of a white and you see just the lines of the blue so for me this is a much prettier marbling there's nothing on this side but there's a lot of colors on this side and this is what you get to you, you, you know you have to kind of measure and figure out what it is that you need on your cake and how big you need it and what do you want on it um, and then that's how you get marble so this one is a sh darker shade this one is more of a white uh, compared to what I had on it and every marble cake is different this is a marbling technique for joining us and sharing those great tips. It's so amazing having you as my guest on Let's Talk Flavor with Ava. Please, easy, easy. Follow me at Blisket with Flavor on Facebook and Instagram.